Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Let's head over to Finland and Estonia where some shenanigans are going down under the Baltic Sea. It looks like we have ourselves another pipeline rupture, folks. That's right. A pipeline transporting natural gas between Finland and Estonia has been damaged. Uh, the Baltic Connector, it's a 95-mile-long pipe that runs along the Baltic Sea floor. Uh, the leak was discovered on October 8th and is being investigated. Now, there are three possible causes for this. First and most likely cause is someone just dropped an anchor on it. It was an accident. It was a mistake. And sometimes these things happen. That is the most likely cause. But the could also be sabotage from a Chinese vessel that was in the vicinity right before the leak and a very suspiciously operating one Russian commercial vessel. So let's talk about those. First, for all the customers out there, the floating Inku LNG terminal that collects this gas is secure and maintaining flow of gas to customers. So service has not been interrupted by this. But there has been suspicious activity near the pipeline. First is a Chinese container ship called New New Polar Bear slowed down from approximately 12 knots to just under uh, seven knots, I believe it was, as it crossed over the pipeline. There was no apparent reason for the slowing down. So what would cause that? Well, they could have simply slowed down the ship, of course, or they could have dropped anchor as they crossed over the pipeline, damaging the pipeline. Whether it was an intentional or not, that is a possibility that is being investigated. The second one is much more suspicious. It's a Russian container, or not a container, a commercial ship that went tracked along the pipeline itself at low speed hours before the leak was detected. So it is far more likely that if this was intentional, that that Russian commercial vessel could have been dragging an anchor along the pipeline until it did finally snag, causing damage and then going on about its business, probably without its anchor. There's an investigation going on, they'll let us know. So right now, this, these actions don't lead to any conclusions. So don't jump on any one of these things. It could be a total accident or it could have been intentional. And uh, we'll let you know as soon as we know something. This is something that I'll be watching as the investigation gets made public. I'll bring it to you and I'm sure it'll be interesting. Do you know what else is interesting? War Thunder. That's right, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle battle game ever made. You can operate more than 2,000 planes, tanks, ships, and helicopters in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. This exciting game uses incredibly detailed vehicles modeled down to their individual components offering highly immersive gameplay. Enjoy the incredible graphics detail at 4K resolutions, authentic sound effects, and great music score creates an immersive atmosphere for you. My favorite part is there's no extra hardware to fly aircraft. It uses nothing more than your keyboard and mouse because of an intuitive mouse aim mode. There is no auto lock here, it's just click and win. I fly that F-16 like a boss too, but with tanks, and that's where it's at, man. I may be a Navy man, but armor has always been my passion. You can play for free now on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And I got a deal for you. My link in the description will get you a large bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account, and exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much, much more for a limited time. Some of you may not have played War Thunder, and if you haven't played for six months or more, you get the same deal when you click my link in the description. So if you haven't played for six months, click the link now. There's a lot of naval news all over the world to catch up on, so let's get started right here at home at Naval Base New London in Groton, Connecticut, where the United States Navy has commissioned the latest Block 4 Virginia-class attack submarine, the USS Hyman G. Rickover SSN 795. The Block 4 Virginia-class submarine provides five key capabilities. First is sea control. The submarine goes out there. It is in control. It can destroy anything within its weapons range right there. But it also has a very long power projection from that point, uh, whether it's anti-ship or land attack. It can project power for hundreds of miles. It is also an unobservable forward presence, which means we can put this in littoral waters anywhere around the world undetected. It's a great uh, force multiplier in that role. It can provide maritime security and with that it provides maritime deterrence. And I would add ISR to that. That'd be part of the forward presence. That's intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Very important in both peacetime and wartime. This submarine is made for that. And uh, I believe they chose a great name for it, Hyman G. Rickover. It has fly-by wire control, which means it's very precisely maneuvered, which gives it an advantage in littoral water. 
And it has built in special forces capability, which means they have their own special lockout, which gives them the room they need for their equipment for much easier egress from the submarine. And she's a big girl, man. She's at 7,800 tons now and long too, at 377 feet long. She's very tall. She's only 34 feet wide, so she's been on the elliptical, keeping her waist thin, and she has a public speed of 25 knots. You know, I'm not saying if you go to the War of Thunder forum, you might find another speed, but public speed is 25 knots for the Block 4. All right, a short note about Admiral Rickover. I absolutely love this man, but that's also because I didn't have to work for him. Okay, he is the father of the Navy nuclear power. He served in the United States Navy for 63 years of active duty. That's most of his life. And after that, they didn't let that happen anymore. They put rules in place. They'll be like, you got to retire after a certain age. But he was in the Navy for a very long time. And in just seven years of those 63 years, he built an infrastructure, got congressional approval with congressional funding to build the first nuclear submarine. The man was brilliant and he pulled it off. I cover this in full detail in the NR1 subbrief that I have retitled Admiral Rickover's NR1. I highly recommend that you go watch that after this video because it's hour long subbrief. The first 30 minutes or so is his life and career. And it is a great story. I would encourage you all to go take a look at Admiral Rickover. What an inspiration he is. Let's take uh, speaking of shipbuilding. Let's take a look at Glasgow, Scotland over there in United Kingdom, where I happen to be a Lord because I bought a piece of land about that big and they gave me a certificate and everything. I, I probably should get a, I got a crown and I think you have to call me King now or something, right? I don't know, but BAE Systems is over here building a brand new assembly building in Glasgow. This is gonna be building ships. That's the assembly building. That's what they're assembling. Now it measures 170 meters long 80 meters wide as an American. I don't know what that means, but it is big enough to build two type 26 frigates at the same time. I know what that means and that's great. So this is a modernized, efficient, cost-effective shipbuilding that's being added to the shipyard that's already there. And I'm featuring this because I recently pointed out the severe lack of shipbuilding capability in the United Kingdom and the United States. Both of our countries have been taking action to increase shipbuilding. So credit to the decision makers for recognizing the problem and addressing it and taking action. That's so important, that last step, doing something about it. So we don't just point out problems here with our nations on this channel. We also recognize the positive developments as often as I can find them. So good job to the UK and let's get some type 26 frigates underway. All right, let's head over to the Spratly Islands, catch up on what's going over there in the South China Sea, where China's behaving poorly again. I guess they don't like it when the attention goes somewhere else for even a few days. So they do something out of hand to get uh, attention back on them. Okay, China right now is threatening civilians because it works so well with Hamas, I guess. And this time it's the two island, part of the Spratly Island chain. This island has been occupied and governed by the Philippines since the 1970s. And this tiny island is home to hundreds of Philippine civilians. It has a little fishing port where they go fishing. It has an airstrip and it even has a little military ship at the end of the runway there where there's a beach craft with a handful of Marines uh, that provide police and security for, for the island. China has significantly upped their aggressive behavior in the Spratly Islands near the Philippine-occupied island of Thetu. A PLAN warship is loitering near the island, and the Chinese public office released a statement, quote, Zhang Dao is Chinese territory, referring to the island. The Philippines have illegally occupied Zhang Dao, which seriously violates Chinese sovereignty. Chinese warship navigation and patrol in the waters of Zhang Dao is lawful and legitimate. End quote. What this statement is, is justification for war. This is a ceaseless belly. So it's never acceptable to threaten or imply the threat of military force against civilians, period. In 2016, the United Nations Arbitration Court ruled in favor of the Philippines. And let me bring this up again and we can all read it together. The permanent court of arbitration has unanimously awarded the arbitration instituted by the Republic of the Philippines against the People's Republic of China. So read it and weep, Chao Ni Ma. I'll bust this ruling out every time some Wu Mao gets frisky. 
What a bunch of losers. You do not own the nine dash line that you made it into a 10 dash line recently. You can add as many dashes as you want. Does it make it legal? Ugh. Anyway, bunch of losers. But you can be a winner in War Thunder. That's right. Use my link in the description and get a large bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account time, and an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much, much more for a limited time. <laughs>